going to prosecute every any Muslim who does the same? Hardly. She's probably going to prosecute people like myself. And so, you know, look, she needs to address how can they catch these terrorists. Let me tell you how difficult it is. These days, you can go on the chat rooms and everything is encrypted. In other words, you have 16, 17,000 conversations going on. With these 17,000 conversations going on, you need an agent for every conversation. That agent has to know Arabic. It's not that they can vet these guys to come in the country. It's that this terrorist will vet the FBI agent when he comes in there acting as if he's Muslim. Now, remember... Oh, my God. So, in other words, how many... T wait, how many active investigations did you just say there are? Well, there's about 16,000 that goes on to record. So uh, we need 16,000 Arabic-speaking agents in order to follow them? We know we don't have that, do we? Not only that, they must be very knowledgeable about Islam. They must speak the language. They must know the code language. They must know everything. So in other words, it's an impossibility to infiltrate the mechanism. And ISIS is demanding 10 million Americans to die. Remember what they say, the, the, the famous slogan they use, Fi atri diyarikum, in the abode of your home. This is why they attack this place. They don't have to attack major building. They can attack uh, any medical center, anything, uh, a mall, a shopping center. Why would, uh, let me ask you, Waleed, why would these psychopaths attack a place that treats developmentally disabled people why would they do a thing like this which only makes everyone on earth hate them even more because it's brilliant savage if you can make every american uh, avoid the major places times square if i avoid times square maybe i'll be okay if i avoid uh, you know concerts uh, football games maybe i'll be okay but no 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 isis is that's why i said their motto is in the abode of your home in any place, they are trying to attack anything that will make anybody paranoid and anybody going out and seeing anything or doing anything for Christmas season. If this happens, they could basically crush the economy. And this is what the, the, the plan is. And let, let's just understand that this is a plan of 10 million people. This fatwa that was given by uh, Nasruddin, what's his name, in, in, in the manifesto. He's talking about 10 million Americans. They talk about weapons of mass destruction. They talk about major issues. The ISIS manifesto, everybody should look at it. I've written it. I've documented it, 26 page of the ISIS manifesto, and what they plan to do in the United States, Australia, France. I did this a year and a half ago, before the Paris attacks, before the attacks here, before the pressure cooker bomber and nobody is listening and so the idea is to oh no they're listening but they're taking the other side loretta lynch said anyone who says a word is now an enemy of the state she took the other side well this is the problem of the west here because the problem is against the judeo christian ethics so they are on their side this is why the muslim brotherhood very clearly says that we will use whatever mechanism that is on our side and that's the liberal movement isis they'll do the same thing it doesn't matter terrorists will use the Americans who are pro-Islam for their purpose. And this is what CARE is all about. Every single American organization that is Islamic, every Islamic organization in America, the major ones, harbored terrorists, assisted terrorists, financed terrorists, CARE also have many members who've been involved in terrorism. And so this is part of the apparatus. You know, jihad is not just blowing up people. Jihad is also a political mechanism. It's an ideology that wants to... Well, well, well Ali, the picture you're painting is not only depressing, but it means that we're liable to lose this war, and this government could fall into the hands of the jihadists themselves, or has it already done so to a certain extent? We already lost the war. You know, how are you going to, def how are you going to protect the homeland if 10 million, I mean, sorry, 10,000 Obama wants to bring from Syria. You have one, let me just give you an example. Abu Omar al-Baljiki, who entered into the Paris attack. Abu Omar al-Baljiki was a well-known beheader in Syria. Now, this guy's photo should have been all over the place, but they can come in under a different passport, which is clean. In other words, they got nothing on their records. So the same thing happened with the San Bernardino attack. These guys have nothing on their records because most likely Tashfin Malik is not the real name of the person. And so 
there is, it's impossible to basically filter this. All right, well, Waleen Shubat, and you're, don't leave us, Shubat.com, S-H-O-E-B-A-T.com. You should be advising the president. You should be advising the Department of Justice. You should be advising DHS and FBI, but instead, you are the villain. It's unbelievable. Everything is upside down. Back in a minute, right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-2640. <laughs> back to the uh, program we have such little time and so much to talk about and uh, we have an expert <clears throat> a real expert not a talking head who's reading other people's stuff while each Shubat knows what's going on and it's pretty depressing we're talking about that especially in light of the fact that our attorney general loretta lynch has just yesterday vowed to prosecute anti-muslim speech Waleed, welcome back to the program. You you were very uh, uh, despondent almost about defeating ISIS. Are you telling us that we're losing this? Absolutely. In fact, they should be fighting all the websites. The guy and his wife made these bombs. How did they access this stuff? How did they know how to make this material? Listen, there are detailed instructions on step-by-step -step manuals in English or in Arabic for homegrown terrorists that can feast their eyes on assortment of websites, give detailed instructions, how to make TATP. In fact, in Paris... Well, why, don't they cl well, why doesn't the government close these down? Even YouTube. I, in fact, I've been communicate, trying to communicate... But, with but wait, Waleed, can you stay with us into the next hour? I want to know your opinion on why the U.S. government does not close these websites down. Well, and why the Attorney General is trying to chill free speech and intimidate those of us who know where the danger lies and whether or not we're going to survive this invasion of the Syrians. That's the real question. Will we survive this importation of this male army? Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. We have three balls in the air, and the most important is the ISIS threat to all of us and what the government is doing about it. Most of us fear the government is not doing enough about it, or, in fact, they're taking the wrong approach. Some of us believe that there's a more sinister story, which is that the government is actually enabling ISIS to thrive in the world and in America. I know many of you don't believe that. Unfortunately, many of us do. Today we wake up and our Attorney General, a, a, a day after the massacre in San Bernardino, she goes before a group of Muslims to placate them, calm them down, and tell them anybody who says anything that's anti-Muslim, that edges towards violence, will be prosecuted. This is the most shocking statement I've ever heard of in my life. It is something that would go on in a university today, for sure, because they don't believe in free speech. Certainly universities are bastions of hate and bastions of uh, cynicism and fascism today. We all know that. Could this be true that the attorney general says a thing like that and doesn't correct the record? Let us hope she corrects the record. Let us hope that she respects the First Amendment. And let us hope that she uses the great power of her office to protect us rather than to persecute us. The second thing is this issue of the shooters themselves. I woke up today and I could not believe what I heard. I predicted it yesterday in a sort of cynical, joking way that tomorrow we'll wake up and one of them, one of the family members will hire a lawyer, a shyster lawyer, to sue the San Bernardino police for um, using too much violence to subdue the attackers. And guess what? Listen to clips four and five. This is the most eerie thing you could ever believe. This is a lawyer for one of the shooters 
in San Bernardino on the Savage Nation. There's a lot of disconnects and there's a lot of unknowns and there's a lot of things that quite frankly don't add up. She was never involved in shooting. She's probably about 90 pounds, so it's, it's unlikely she could even carry a weapon or wear some type of a vest or, or do any of this. Um, where the couple was found, from what I understand, is that they were handcuffed, lying face down in this truck, uh, shot up. Um, th there's a lot of things that just don't make sense. Okay. Now, you know, there should be a limit to what lawyers can do in this country lawyers should be limited and they should be they should be supervised a lot better they should be sued if, in a time like this or the license is pulled I mean do you realize what this animal just said do you realize what this thing with a law degree just said he just said that they're innocent victims who were trussed up handcuffed and executed by the police this thing with a law degree has now just spit on the bodies of all the dead people, spit in the faces of all the survivors' families. Moreover, he has spit in the face of those brave men who went in there to face those, those vermin. This passes for a lawyer today in the United States of America. It's a uh, courtroom that needs to be stopped. You talk about free speech. Shouldn't there be limits on what lawyers can say and do? especially at a time like this. Where did this lawyer come from? What is his background? What What is David Chelsea's associations? How was he so quick to be found? Well, these are the questions that would be answered in a legitimate, sane society, in my opinion. I want to go now to um, Waleed Shubat, S-H-O-E-B-A-T, one of my favorite guests. I don't have him on often enough because he speaks Arabic. He's a former member of the PLO. And he knows more about the mind of the terrorist than anybody I have ever spoken with. Waleed, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Did you happen to hear the attorney's commentary that I just played? Yes, of course. It's the idea of creating enough problems for the police. In other words, the war is not a war on terror. It's a war on the police force. This is why they create racial divide. This is why they always attack the cops in these racial divides. So they can make a sect of the population fight another sect of the population, and you divide and you conquer. The idea is power. And if a government can have power, just look at Mexico next door. Once they begin to deal with the cartels, you have a situation in Mexico just as worse as in Syria. The killings in Mexico is unbelievable. Over 100,000 people massacred in Mexico. Nobody talks about it. Eric Holder sends weapons over to Mexico and then so you create a problem against the guns the gun is the problem so you create more abortions so somebody who's religious enough says enough with abortions and attacks the Planned Parenthood they say oh look there's terrorism by the Americans themselves so you create Planned Parenthood you create racial divide you create all these things you bring 10,000 immigrants from Syria you create all this chaos so you can be in control this is very simple is the idea of the mindset of the liberal agenda that we have. This is why the liberal agenda is so much Islamist, because you find the liberal agenda with the same mentality as the Islamist. You have the environmentalist. The environmentalist is very close to Islam. They agree with Islam because Islam talks about environmentalism called al himaz Abortion, you know, in the Muslim mindset is not the same as the, the Christian or the Jew, because in Islam there's a gestation period. In other words, you can have abortions. They are in agreement with these Islamists. It's not that they are disagreement. They're in agreement with any revolutionary mindset. They're in agreement with any communist mindset, Islamist mindset, you name it. This well, hold, Wally, before, I agree with you, and I love listening to you. I, I, you said so many things. One of them is about abortion. I thought abortion was illegal amongst fundamentalist Muslims. That's not true. That's not true whatsoever. There's a gestation period in Islam in which the spirit does not connect with the fetus. So before that, you can abort. So this is why you look at, uh, you know, people who become uh, in the political sphere in America. Why is, and they're Muslim, why is all their agenda so liberal? Islam is not conservative. This is a myth. It's not true. They believe in the Big Bang. In fact, the Big Bang theory is taught by Islamists in the U.S. in the universities. 
So, you know, it is the belief in evolutionary process, sort of a creationary evolutionary process, in which evolution is part and parcel of the part of, a, of creation. Islam is a cult. It's not a Judeo-Christian ethics whatsoever. It's Islam is environmentalism. Islam is share the wealth. When Obama says sharing the wealth, he, give, he gets that from Muhammad himself. When they moved from Mecca to Medina,